Little Rob, how's it going? It's going great, man. Can't complain about nothing right now. All to the bueno. It's all to the bueno, big dog. Yeah, hell yeah. I want to uh, I want to talk about your life growing up. Uh, you're from San Diego. Yeah. What neighborhood are you from? I'm from a little town called uh, La Colonia Eden Gardens. It's in the uh, city of Solana Beach. And it's a little Mexican neighborhood within within the city of Solana Beach. You know what I mean? Yeah. But back in the days, like with my grandma's, my grandma's uh, time, it was segregated. And so they put all the Mexicans in this little area of uh, Solana Beach and they had their own school. And they weren't allowed to go to school with the with the whites at that time. You know what I mean? So they put us all there, man. And um, it's just a little Mexican town from all the uh, farm workers and everything that it's just kind of just kind of got put there, man. That's where I'm from. How big is it? How many people would you say? Uh, I don't, I don't really know, man. Uh, how big it is? A few streets for for us, though. You know what I mean? Hmm. Yeah, we got a park and everything, but it's it's a few streets. Yeah. And you're from uh, Eden Gardens, you said? Yeah, a little town called uh, Eden Gardens. And there's a clip on uh, on YouTube from 1992 when uh, I'm actually uh, rapping on the camera in 1992 when I was 16. And that was right before I recorded that song that I was rapping on the on that interview. You know what I mean? That's oh, what a night in the six one nine, one of my uh, first jams ever recorded in the studio. I saw that clip, man. I mean, it, yeah. it's it's really trippy just watching you. It's like a time capsule moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like you know, it's about a you know about a mile from the beach. You know what I mean? But uh, it's 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 it's, it's uh, over the hill is the beach. You know what I mean? But in a in a in a, in a walking distance from the uh, Del Mar racetrack. You know, yeah, yeah. Where my grandfather used to work and everything too, man. And um, you know, from what I hear, uh, you know, my grandma's house was built from the wood from the racetrack. You know, extra wood from the racetrack and everything, man. And that was built in 1919, and and that's my yeah, that's my neighborhood, and and that's where I was brought up. And my grandma lived right next door to me, and uh, you know, so she would yell from the she would yell from her house when she needed me, and she'd call me Bobby. That's my son's name too, Bobby. She'd be like, Bobby. And, you know, so I go up there and I said, what's up? We were neighbors. And it was just our little block, man. We had like a, a four house, four house block right there, you know? Yeah. Uh, that belonged to us that we were, that we owned, you know? So your whole family lived that closely to each other? Yeah, yeah. My grandma lived right here. And then uh, she gave uh, my mom the house right next door. And then my, my uncle Charlie lived down, down, right down the street, up the next driveway. And I got some cousins that lived right next door to us. And, you know, it was just a, a real family oriented, uh, uh, neighborhood man and um with a lot of cousins and uh just family man a lot of family and and close friends and if they weren't my family that were that were related to somebody else that was my cousin you know what i mean so it was uh it's a small little town like that man where everybody knew each other and everybody took care of each other you know yeah yeah, yeah. for sure so yeah you have a, a brother do you have any other siblings, siblings? yeah i got a, a an older brother and an older sister yeah yeah so i grew up listening to what they were doing and everything, man, and uh, just the the baby of the family in the house, just watching them do what they do and uh, going out and um, you know and always uh, listening to the music they were listening to, you know, whether it was the freestyle music that my sister was listening to and and uh, the party music because she would go down to party at DJ and then my brother would party at DJ and then when I got you know I was going to se I was like seventeen years old going to TJ you know to go party and stuff and you know not to mention at sixteen I went over there and I was handing out my uh, my first, uh, my first vinyl with over the night in the six one nine and Mexican gangster on it. Just like I said, I was standing in line, um, you know, just passing out albums, man, because I wasn't uh, able to go into the uh, clubs at at that age, you know. How'd you start rhyming in the first place? I mean, I I, I wouldn't in my mind, uh, Eden Gardens isn't a bastion of hip hop history. In my mind, it's not. But oh yeah, was, yeah. Was a lot of people break dancing, rapping around. What was it like? Uh, just uh, you know, well, we were just brought up on that whole uh. I don't know, the whole breakdancing thing, man. When I was breakdancing, uh, I was going by the name of Little Rock, Little ROC, you know? But that was a long time ago. I was in fourth grade doing the the, the world and stuff like that, man, trying to do it. But I can't do it now, but um, so I was like in fourth grade, man, you know? I remember being in third grade. I remember in third grade doing the, um, pulling out the cardboard and everything, and we were doing that, man. And I would go perform at the, so that's what, what was what that? Elementary school from like first to third, and I would go to the, to the uh, middle school fourth, and go, fourth, and go, and go fourth. yeah, four through six. I go over there and go perform for the uh, for that for that school. You know what I mean? So I was that young doing things like that, man. And um, so just uh, from the beginning, I, I mean, I was born in '75, man. So when uh, when I was listening to hip hop, it was kind of from the get go. 
you know what I mean? And uh, my brother had all the all the all the records. Uh, him and his friends were uh, DJing that their own little DJ crew, you know. And um, so then I would just go hang out with them, man, and then take over the mic sometimes at some of the parties. But I was young, man. I was like thirteen or fourteen, you know. I mean, that's what that you video that? clip of from '92 looks like. I mean, you were what sixteen? Yeah, I was sixteen right there. Yeah, man. Yeah. So that's my first rap already with the produced beat for, from uh, Sir Crown right there, and. Uh, you know, I ended up taking that song to the to the studio and uh, recording that one in in Mexican Gangster. But um, um, so yeah, man, it's just been a long time. I was I was going to parties with my brother, and uh, you know, I remember going to a couple of parties in uh, in uh, Vato Carlos Bad Man, and uh, and my brother would DJ, and I would take take over the mic real quick and um, and rock a rhyme. But I don't remember what rhymes they were, but you know, I was I was trying. I must have been about fourteen, fifteen at that time, man. You know what I mean? So it's always been a part of me, but uh. Before that, even now, a break dancing and you know, and um, riding BMX bikes and even skateboarding a little bit, you know what I mean? Just whatever, you know, just a kid, man. Had a good childhood, growing up in the, in that town, man, with all my cousins and everything, man. And uh, and um, yeah, just a, it's a, I, I don't think I'd be who I am if I wasn't brought up in that town, man. Right. You know. When I think of that era, though, I always think about like honestly, I think about crack. You know, like yeah, yeah, I yeah. feel like that's when. Just generally speaking, nationwide, certain communities just had crack. It was on the news every day. Like, did did you feel that? Was there a crack influx in the neighborhood? Uh, I, I didn't really know nothing about crack or any of that stuff, man. But I just I just knew there was a lot, a lot of heroin overdoses going on, man. You know what I mean? And uh, and uh, so when I was riding my BMX bike around, man, my GT, you know, um, you know, we'd be uh, we'd be hanging out, me and the cousins, whatever, riding bikes around, and we'd hear the ambulance. In, in the town, you know, going off and everything. We, we would follow the ambulance and go, you know, see who overdosed today, you know what I mean? And so there was a bad little uh, time for that. So we've had our ups and downs in that town, man. But uh, but overall, man, it was, a, it was a great town to be brought up in. But we just, uh, we saw a lot of that going on, you know, a lot of overdoses and stuff like that. But Man. Yeah, man, but. Um, man, I mean, did that, did, did, did that experience feel like it affected you, your, your point of view at all, or is it just kind of nah, it was just, thing it that was just kind of normal thing, I guess. You know what I mean? And and uh, you know, back then too, man, you could see, you would find you know syringe needles on the floor and stuff like that by the you know when you're walking to school and sh you know. Yeah. So that's kind of I guess different, yeah. But um, but it wasn't all gangster gangster like that. It was, but it was, it was some. It was it was a cool little town, man. I mean, you did, know, uh, full did, of the brown people, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I heard the food's amazing too in that place, in that neighborhood. Oh yeah, yeah. My my favorite place is Tony Sacal right there and uh, Fidel's Fidel's right there, man. It's a you know, cool little place. We used to hang out at the Bluebird and shit. Yeah. You know, when I turned twenty one, I was I was drinking at the Bluebird, you know, and uh, that's uh, that's a uh, that's a long time ago, man. Uh in the market cafe. That was one another place where we'd always go remember always going down to the market cafe and uh always being asked to leave because we'd always just kick, kick back outside, you know, but we were kids, man, just kicking back outside by the payphone. Yeah. And hanging out right there, man, and, uh, you know, calling the party line and shit like that, you know? And I would go down with the new rap that I had just written and my boy would put it in his, you know, boom box and we kind of listen to what I did, you know? But you're rhyming real early though. I mean, yeah. you said you are going to Tijuana to pass out music? Yeah, that was when I, yeah, when I was 16, when I first recorded that, man, went to TJ and, uh, there was a concert going on at El Torito Pub, and we just kind of, um, everyone went in, but I couldn't go in because I was 16. Me and another friend of mine, we couldn't go in, so we just handed out my uh, my uh, my uh, records right there to the people in line and mm. and just hope for the best, you know, I guess, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But so, Southern California has a reputation of being, you know, just gang territory in general. I mean, I, I grew up watching Colors and Boys in the Hoods and Bloods yeah. and Chris. Like, were you ever affiliated or was that a part of your growing up? I mean, I mean, I, I think that, uh, you know, a lot of those movies, man, just being, uh, you know, Chicano and stuff, you know, and, uh, and watching the Chicano movies, the Chicano gangster movies, you know, kind of like maybe kind of put a little influence on on that kind of thing, you know. But um, I've always been real cool, man. I never was uh, trying to get into any trouble or stuff like that, but... But um, but sometimes we did, man. You know, and and uh, you know, just like one of my homies, man. He just passed away. I was went to his uh, f uh, funeral a couple of weeks back, man, in uh, in San Diego, and um, I had to stop by and, and and say bye to the guy, man, because I remember a couple of times when uh, you know, that we're gonna go pull some pull some crimes, you know, maybe like a you know a robbery or something like that, and uh, 
and uh, and I was there. And it's almost like if you're there, you're going to be a part of this right now, man. You know what I mean? But he was always someone that was like, hey, man, you don't got to do that, man. You know, you do your music, dude. You know what I mean? Like, you know, what are you doing, man? You don't got to go up, man. Just stay back, you know? And then later on, you know, like uh, one of them guys, man, I lost one of my friends when he was 21, you know, doing the same thing, man. And, uh, but I was just never really a part of, yeah. a part of that part, you know? So you had people that kind of kept you away from. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. I got into, you know, some stupid things sometimes, man. I remember, I remember like we, uh, we waited for some dude to try to get his date and said, we, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like looking back now, it's almost like, what, what was that from? Like, that's from like Menace to Society, you know what I mean? Like, Got to get this dude's dating, you know what I mean? Number something, you know, I want to put him on my car, you know? Like, so, you know, little things like that, man. But um, but um, luckily nothing ever really uh, happened, dude. You know what I mean? I, I, I always, uh, I guess something maybe or was watching out for me to where I never got busted for anything stupid like that. Like, you know, little kid shit, you know what I mean? 